you down to Pine Ridge for another visit with Lum and Abner. Brought to you by the makers of Horlicks, the original malted milk. I'd like to take a minute first to tell you something about weight control. If you really want to reduce, whatever plans you follow, do be sure it's absolutely safe. There are many methods of weight control, of which your doctor might not approve. So be on the safe side. Do as thousands of others are doing today. Follow the Horlick plan. This plan is simple, effective, and absolutely safe. It consists merely of drinking a glass full of Horlicks every noon in place of your regular lunch. Horlicks is energy-giving and sustaining and has the elements essential for proper, sufficient nourishment. Yet it contains none of the excess calories of the heavier meal. And excess calories, you know, are a common cause of overweight. Start tomorrow. The sooner you start the plan, of course, the sooner you'll lose those excess pounds. Keep a package on hand. You can get Horlicks from your dealer in either natural or chocolate flavor. And now let's see what's happening down in Pine Ridge. You know Lum was arrested last Tuesday by a federal officer for violation of the Blue Sky Law in connection with the stock he sold in the Great Western Sterling Silver Company. He's been held in jail ever since, but was released last night on a $5,000 bond made by his friends. As we look in on Pine Ridge today, we find Grandpappy Spears over at Dick Huddleston's store discussing the matter. Listen. Well, I ain't surprised none. I said all along you weren't nothing to that silver mine. Boy, you wouldn't complain, Grandpap. You didn't lose anything in it. In fact, that's how come Lum to get into trouble when he sold that fellow Donahue some stock in it just so that he could raise a hundred dollars to pay you back what you had invested in the mine. Well, yes, I was lucky enough to get mine back all right. But I'm talking about these others around here, never. Like the widow Abernathy told me this morning she invested in it. You're going to lose every nickel of it, just as sure as I'm a-setting here on this counter. All on the counter Lum entered. Well, now, I don't think the stockholders ought to blame Lum altogether on it. Well, he's the one that sold it to us, weren't he? Well, he was just working for Squire Skimp, though. Squire's the one that got the money out of it. Lum honestly thought that you'd all get rich out of it. Just trying to help his friends by selling it to him. Yeah, he ought to investigate it before he sold any stock in it, though. Knowed where he was any count or not. Yes, I guess Lum realizes that now. He could have saved himself all this trouble. Well, it's too late now. Facing a giver man charge. They'll make him dance, I bound you. Well, I feel sorry for Lum myself, Grandpap, and I intend to do everything I can to help him out of this scrape. Oh, yeah, I feel sorry for him, too, but he ain't got nobody to blame but himself. Now, yonder comes having a Peabody up out there. Good a friend as Lum's got in the world, but Dad blamed if he didn't sell him some stock. Caused him to lose back the money. Well, I don't think Abner holds it against Lum. Yeah, if he don't, he's the only one of the stockholders that don't, I'll say that. Well, why should they be blaming Lum for it? They should have investigated the stock more thoroughly themselves before they put their money in. That's the trouble with most people. They never make a mistake themselves. It's all of someone else that does it. Why don't they just admit that they made a bad investment? Yeah, I don't know, but I've heard them talking amongst themselves. And well, talking. come in, Abner. Yeah, howdy, Abner. Howdy, howdy. Has Lum been down here today? Well, no, I haven't seen him today, Abner. Well, I just been looking every place for him. I finished making up that bond for him last night and turned him out of jail. And I ain't for him since. Been looking all over town for him. Maybe he's over about his place, Abner. It's time to get out on the streets. No, I just come from his place, and he ain't over there. I went on out to the barn and looked for him. Even his chickens and cows gone. Well, I do know. Just looks like that he just moved off and left it. Here, wait a minute, man. Wait a minute. Reckon he jumped bond? Well, I don't know. That's what I was wondering about, Grandpa. Oh, no, no. I don't think Lum would do anything like that. Well, I don't know, Dick. He was awful worried and tore up over there. He told me last night he'd just shamed to face his friends after getting arrested that way. Yes, sir. That's just about what he did. Skipped out and left us bondsmen to pay off his bond. That'll be $500 there I'm out. You're the one that talked me into signing that bond, Abner Peabody. Well, now, don't be jumping on me about it. I signed it for $1,000 myself. Oh, well, now, I imagine Lum's around town here somewhere. Well, what makes me think maybe he's left? 
I went in his house looking for him, and you know that old steeple clock that sets out on the mantelpiece? Oh, yeah, yeah, sure. Well, I've heard him say a hundred times that he'd part with everything else he's got before he let that go, and it's gone. Gone? Yeah, I figured he must not be aiming on coming back or he wouldn't have took it with him. Well, that settles it, man, that settles it. He's gone for good. Well, now, wait a minute now. You fellas are just jumping to conclusions. Conclusions, nothing. I knowed I wasn't to sign that bond. That's blame him. Him a facing a give him in charge for the boost I lost. I don't know what's got wrong with me here lately. I'll sign anything anybody sticks under my nose. I wish I'd never learned to write my name. Well, if Lom has left for good to get out of facing them charges, Dick, will, will us fellas that sign that bond have to pay the $5,000? Well, yes, he can't be found, we will, Edna. Man, I don't know where I could ever raise my part of it. Well, I'm on there for $1,000, too, Edna. I'm not worried about it. Hey, what makes you so sure, Richard? Well, I just think I know Lum, and I don't think he'd do that. Yeah, to my notions, a man that'll get out here and sell stock in a no-count company to his friends will do anything. Well, he never knowed it weren't no-count, old Grandpa. Yeah, he ordered an old boy got out here and talked his friends into buying it, though. Well, what are you complaining about? You never lost nothing. Rom paid you what you had invested in it. I seen him do it myself, a hundred dollars. Yeah, but what about this bond? I'll lose five hundred dollars on that. I'll be worthless off and ever. Yeah, dog it, I hope he has run off. Just so as you'll lose that five hundred dollars. No, no, oh, wait a minute. No, I don't need it. <laughs> I forgot about something. Well, I'll tell you one thing. If he has run off, I'll track him the rest of my oh, life. Well, right. come on in, Cedric. Yeah, howdy, Cedric. That boy always stands there in the door for about five minutes before he comes in like he's afraid I'm going to run him off or something. <laughs> How'd he do, sir? <laughs> uh, did you get the engine fixed on the store, Cedric? Uh, uh, no, no, not yet. Uh, he'll be ready in time to take out in the morning, though. Paul's over at the blacksmith shop working on it now. Uh-huh. What's the matter? Didn't you take the store out today, Abner? No, the carbonator was a flooding itself. Uh, weren't that it, Cedric? Yes, Mom. <laughs> was there something for you, Cedric? Well, uh, no, Mom, I reckon not. I uh, uh, don't reckon there one of you fellas wants to buy a good milk cow, do you? Milk cow? Uh, where did you get a cow? Well, I, I, I sort of went into the cattle business this morning, buying and selling them. Well, I do know. How many head of cattle have you got, Cedric? Well, uh, oh, just one head so far. She's an extra, though. <laughs> you fellas know her. She's that jersey Mr. Lum had. Lum had? Well, where, where are you doing selling Lum's cow? Well, well, she ain't his no more, though. Belongs to me now. I bought her off of her this morning. Bought a cow and 17 chickens off of it. Well, that's where they went. Sure. Well, now, I reckon what he's doing, selling them off. Well, he, he sold off everything he had over, I reckon. Come down there at the blacksmith shop this morning, sold me that cow and chickens, and sold Luther Jacobs a span of mules and three head of hogs, or shoats they was. Well, I do know. He was just taking any price he could get for them, too. He was. He said he had to get shut of them. Appeared to be in a terrible hurry for some reason or other. He made a deal. He got in the car with the mail carrier and taken the old clock he had with him and headed for the county seat. He did. <laughs> yes, well. well, there you are, man. There you are. What'd I tell you? He skipped out. That's what he did. Selling off his stuff to raise money to leave the country with. Well, it does look that way, don't it? I reckon that's the reason he was in such a hurry. More like they're trying to catch a noon train in at the county seat. And he never even told me goodbye or nothing. Well, now, wait a minute here. If Lum has really gone, why, he'd have said something about it to Evelina Schultz. He'd have told her, wouldn't he? Yeah, more than likely. Yeah, right, Jack, I'll just call her up and find out about this right now. Yeah, she's home from school teaching, but now I ought to be. Oh, yeah, that's way after four Let's o'clock. see, uh, she's staying over at Sister Simpson's again this year, isn't she? Yeah, yeah. Uh, see if you can find out where he went if you can, Dick. He might have told her, you know, where he was going. Yeah, just a minute, just a minute. Hello? Uh, Miss Simpson? Uh, is Evelina there? Uh, I'd like to speak to her, please, ma'am. <laughs> All right. Must be there. No, sir, old Lum's just about struck out for some place, just as fur from pine ridges he can get. Some fern country, maybe. Well, I never would have thought he'd have did it, but 
Being we have, I sure hope we don't never catch him. I sure do. Hope they don't catch him. Yes, sir, I hope they don't catch him if he's left. You own his bond for a thousand dollars? Well, I'd rather pay a thousand dollars and see him go to the penitentiary any time if I can raise the money. Well, everybody has their own notions. Hello? Uh, yeah, Evelina, this is Dick Huddleston. Oh, I fine, thank you. Why, uh, Evelina, I wanted to ask you if you knew anything about where Lum is. Well, uh, reports out that uh, he sold off everything he has and left town. I thought I'd Wait a minute, Richard. I believe that's him coming up out there in front now. Yeah, there's old Lum. Get your shore to work. Well, uh, never mind, Evelina. They say they see Lum coming up out there in front now. Yeah, it's him. Well, I'll explain it to you later. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Goodbye. Well, I know he hadn't left out, left no. us to pay off no bond for him. No, of course he wouldn't. No, I wouldn't do a thing like Just like I told you. Well, now, come in, Lum. Where in the world have you been? He gave us a scare down hey, here. Gentlemen, gentlemen. <laughs> hey, what's the matter? Why, they had the report start around here, Lum, that you'd sold off everything he had and skipped the country and left us to pay the bond. Oh, something such a fresh. Well, I've been selling off everything I got, but I weren't even on skipping the country. Yeah. See that satchel there? I've got $2,200 in cold cash, greenbacks in there. Well, where in the world did you ever get all that? Well, I got it. I sold off all my stock on the place over there and took that old steeple clock that's been in our family so long and sold it to an antique dealer in there at the county seat. And then I borrowed $2,000 on my place from the bank. Well, what are you raising all that money for, Lum? Well, I got to studying about this thing when I was in jail over there and... I figured up while I was over there that the folks around here has invested $3,100 in that silver mine. And I'm starting out right this afternoon to pay the stockholders back every nickel they've got invested in that mine. That is, as far as this money will go. And tomorrow I'm going to raise the rest of it some way. I don't know how, but I aim to see that nobody don't lose a nickel on it. Evidently Lum feels that although he has been made the victim of another of Squire Skimp's crooked schemes, if he can return the stockholders' money, there can be no complaint of fraud. Do you ever wonder why Horlicks is so popular with elderly people and convalescents? Why in hundreds of hospitals and homes you'll always find such people drinking Horlicks? Well, I'll tell you. It's largely because Horlicks' full, rich flavor makes it so delicious and refreshing. Nourishing and easily digested, it's just the sort of strengthening food drink that these people need. And they do not grow tired of Horlicks, no matter how regularly it's included in their diet. Now, that fine flavor is one that you won't find in any but Horlicks malted milk. That's one of the big differences between Horlicks and substitutes. One of the reasons why to get full value for your money, as well as best results, you want to always insist on Horlicks, the original. You can get it, you know, in both natural and chocolate flavors. This is Carlton Brickert speaking for Lum and Abner and Harley, who now bid you all goodbye until tomorrow at the same time.